Welcome to Build with Rob. I am Rob Deerdeck, CEO of the Deerdeck Machine, a one of a kind venture creation studio where we manufacture amazing companies using our machine method. This show is all about our passion for creating companies with our do or die entrepreneur co founders and all the lessons that we have learned along the way. On the show today, the living legend, the one and only John Buscemi. Um, look, it is an absolute honor to even call John Buscemi a partner. It has been a long time dream of mine to build a company with this man. We go all the way back to the DC days. Uh, I almost partnered with him a couple times here and there uh, over our long friendship. But recently, we were able to come together and create the most extraordinary comfort brand on the planet Earth. We call it Luso Cloud. John Buscemi, welcome to Build with Rob, man. It is an honor to have you here. Rob, come on, man. man it's you an honor have to have you, you here, man. Oh, man. Uh, I've been dodging you a little oh, bit. Oh, hey, hey, I don't know. The hardest man in the world to book. Your partner in Luso Cloud, your co founder in Luso Cloud, hardest man to lock down. And it's like, what do you think? How about four o'clock on Thursday? Everybody move everything aside. Clear room for Buscemi. And then I still wasn't sure if you were going to make it. I am just don't want to let all the secrets out, you know? Oh, man. We'll I give know. a few. We'll, Look, give, let, we'll hey, give three out of five. That's you know? it. That's it. Just, just a, a little couple, just a little bit secrets. of it. You know, it is, you know, a long time coming that we could we could get together and finally build a business, you know? Uh, we've okay. had a lot of history together throughout the years. Uh, do you remember the first time that we met? I do. Very vividly. Yeah, tell I, me. I tell, tell me about I it. I tell this story... I tell this story fondly, often, more often than I don't tell this story. Our story is a key moment in my whole, like, the whole career, essentially, right? So I don't know how far back, I don't have to go too far back, but yeah. I started working at DC, yep. right? And my first week on the job, my boss was on his family vacation. I was hired in the, in the, in like just right after the new year. So I'm sitting in this office, literally, first of all, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I don't have a job description yet. <laughs> they hired me because I had the right sneakers on in the interview, I think. Yeah. And like, I'm at this job, he goes on vacation and me and Sean Baravetto are literally, remember Baravetto? Oh yeah. Of course. We're sitting in an office together, like kind of just like looking at each other. We had to go to the Apple store to go get our computers, whatever. And, um, my boss gets back and he says, there's two things that we're working on. One, you have to get your passport and go to ISPO in Germany. And I've never left the country before in my life. <laughs> oh, really? Up to first... that? DC sent you I, across the Other world? than like Mexico. Wow. Well, Mexico is an international destination, but like yeah. I never went across the sea. Yeah. You know? So my first week is go to ISPO to a trade show, the DC booth in Germany. And the second task was to work on Stevie Williams pro model shoe hmm. i think it was his last shoe before he left yeah so i believe i talked to stevie on the phone and i came up with like a brief and i started to think about like what stevie williams shoe was already designed i had to do the colors and i had to do the packaging so i was like i can't really i couldn't have this broad arc so I, i'm 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 really focused in on this one thing and it was the packaging essentially so Stevie was drinking a lot of champagne at the time, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's still drinking a lot. I, look, he is. He yeah. is. Maybe he is. So anyway, to make a long story short, um, it was really the days of Cristal, like Cufflinks, Jay-Z change clothes video. Mm. Lots of champagne, sexiness. So I went with my corporate Amex card, which I can't believe I, they even gave me. They were loose back then. Very they loose. were like, oh, you're brand new. Oh, Get, take an Amex card and go and, for it. And Ken making fun of you like, oh, that's not black. <laughs> yeah, for like, real. Lots of, lots of jokes on a silver card, which was like, okay. Anyway, so I go to the liquor store in Carlsbad. I buy a bottle of Cristal. And I take the champagne, put it over here, and I put his shoe in that clear yellow cellophane. And I wrap it back up. And I went to the gift a gift shop and i got this beautiful green box mm -hmm. it was almost like a dom perignon box and i don't know if you remember all these details maybe probably not oh i do maybe a little bit. i do so again dc used to trick off on these like 
concept reviews. Like, let's go to the Four Seasons and oh. present the concept of you. And there was like <laughs> people in white hats serving. Uh, it was, it was really wild. They, like, it was the best. No, it was like, it was let's the best. overspend on like the most random stuff. Like super overspend yeah. style. <laughs> And I come from, well, I came from Wall Street, so I saw a little bit of that already. But to be at a skate shoot, like to be at DC, who we all knew, like that side of it was always ridiculous, yeah. fun. Yeah. Anyway, so we're presenting in like a conference room in the Four Seasons Aviara. And it was like my turn to go. And I was just like, I was petrified. Yeah. <laughs> There's like 50 people in that room. Yeah. And um, did I present you the, presented something earlier yeah. in, the, in the day you were there presenting something because keep it keep in mind I did a yeah. deal on the side where I would design shoes and present to those meetings and anyone that got picked right. I would get a 2% royalty on yeah, yeah, we, and then I would they would all get picked and all the designers would have to go deal with it and actually make exactly. it and then I would just get paid they were exactly. so bitter they I, were so I, bitter. there was lots of like sadness and bitterness behind the scenes <laughs> and they were, it was unfair it was, it was, a little, unfair. It was an unfair advantage I went in there with but the you razzle had your dazzle. side deal the yeah. razzle dazzle and all the sales reps are like yeah man yeah. Adam Quick was like let's fucking go yeah. or whatever uh, like whatever yeah. the sales thank you, guy Adam. was right thank you all Whoever those made guys those choices and so so I present and I go on stage. I have like, I think I had like a pink T-shirt on at the time, which was a little real avant-garde. Yeah. Really nice jeans, some crazy. God, nuts. it's like I'm starting yeah. to see it. I'm starting to visualize yeah. it now. I had Nikes on, which was another like problem <laughs> for a few people in the room. So real. which was just like real. Like I just didn't know like the the etiquette yet. Yeah. So I'm in the room, and I said, you know. I started with my relationship with Stevie. We had known each other because he was in New York City a lot before I moved to Cali, blah, 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 chocolate, my connections. And I said, I talked about if I was Stevie Williams and I wanted to get this, if I, if I received this shoe, this is what I would want to receive. And that's how I started. I just went through it was like, we're going to package this shoe like champagne. And I just went through it and I took the box out and I took the, the cellophane out, took the shoe out, and I just heard, I saw you kind of fidgeting in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget, I, there was lots of unchanged stunned faces, like the big, the like, you know, the Jeffs and yeah, those people yeah. were just like, who's this fucking clown? Yeah. And you were just like, you got riled yeah, up, you know what like, I mean? We got something here. We <laughs> got is this here. guy? Who is this guy? <laughs> and then it was like, Damon was smiling because we knew each other. Ken, we had met in New York through mutual friends. And I don't believe Ken was there. It was like yeah, Damon yeah. and like the other big wigs, Jay, mm -hmm. salespeople. And then I think you were like, who is this guy? And you just, you went out on our, I don't remember the details of what you said, but yeah. you were just like, you know, you did you. You, you, I mean, you look, latched on immediately. <laughs> hey, because it was like, nobody was like walking. And, and I, I I wasn't quite sure of like what what your position was. It was kind of like PLM. Yeah, the, the the it was called product line manager, but trend forecaster was yeah, thrown around it, a bit. Yeah, you know? it, like, it was like asked for this next level, and then the, immediately this guy is gonna be like, here's where we're gonna go. We're gonna pull out the champagne, like it when the crinkle paper and the vibe yeah. and the it's like this. We're in, we're walking into some special territory here, right? Like, right. right. And then it's like, uh, you know, all the stuff that you did in that era, like Blackwater stuff, like a bunch of like, mm -hmm. I mean, it was just, it, I mean, back to back to back heat. And un unfortunately, yeah, it was you're, too you're big. You're working against the tide over there. Yeah, like it was. You're too... paddling into big waves. Right, there, you know? bro. The you're waves paddling, are just look, paddling. Dude. The surfers, you're not going the skaters, anywhere. You're just yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah, you know, and 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 just sad in yeah, that type of organization. It, it, but it, but I just think it was the it was like they had the right idea, but no place to sell it like as it related right. in the marketplace they were still a global skate surf sort of business and this this sort of even damon struggled with all sort of the art collaborations he did early cause and all types right. of stuff that that could never really get that it's funny like way. cause and the supreme the the, the dc supreme collaboration yeah. was their first yeah that was dc's first collaboration yeah. right for shoes think about that like all those things like but i think also you being part of the problem in a way, kind of in a, not a problem, but yep. when you came in with the show yeah, and like all that big, like wave, the, the, the public wanted it. So where yeah. do you sell to the public? You know, Bob's shoe barn and oh. the, and the big, big retailers, which is great to grow the business, but then you're like focus shifts. Yeah. And then Nick came Adcock 
and kind of tried to like part the seas, that big yeah. wave, yeah. and you just still couldn't get through it. But I mean, but, you got to think, yeah. think about that wave. But think was, about what you. But like, it was a hundred million to five hundred million right. on and, just the Robin Big wave. Yeah, you know? but even if we made twenty million on Blackwater, it's still just yeah. like a yeah. But but even then, it was still like not getting quite the same love in any of the 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 more hardcore streetwear sort of uh, boutique uh, we had, two places. We, we got into a few of them, you know? Because like, we, we Supreme never in. sold the actual Supreme DC, right? Like, I don't even think it ever came to market. I just think it was samples. Oh, right? was it just samples? Yeah, I don't remember that part. Yeah. All right, well, look, yeah. you know, it, then from that point forward, you know, you were on a on a serial entrepreneur journey. Yeah. You know what I mean? We I mean, went on a bit of a tear. I mean, let's let's talk about all the companies that you have done from that point forward. Yeah. So I left DC and well, there's a lot of in between stuff, but I think the the one situation that helped me get to where I'm at now is I got I got offered to work at Oliver Peoples, which is an eyewear company. Mm -hmm. It's arguably the most luxurious, you know, American eyewear company, you know. And I learned kind of like those luxury brand chops there. And I started uh, Gourmet kind of at the same time. And Gourmet was really kind of my exit out of D.C. And my first, you know, quote unquote, entrepreneurial, you know, jump. Yeah. With, But I also feel like I had three partners in it. It wasn't, it wasn't like the pure play entrepreneur play yeah, in my yeah. opinion it was kind of three guys with a great idea similar like-minded individuals high taste level motivated to do a brand etc but like not the right like more of a hack you yeah. know what i mean yeah. like entrepreneur i feel like entrepreneurs now have a lot more tools than we did in 2007 well it's also like we i would say our knowledge base in 2007 and what what we thought about starting a company was so different it was real right different. like you, when you just got together with everyone like hey let's just you know we we know manufacturing we got a source at a, at a factory like yeah. we can get like there's get a there. famous a life t-shirt it's like i got a good idea my dad has a factory yeah, I know a sales guy. Like, there's a T-shirt that kind of encapsulates that. That's what <laughs> Is, we were. It was yeah. like, my my man can sell it. Right. You know, my home girl works at at Hype Beast. Yeah, you know, and, like and we had that. Stuff, you, yeah, and you know? that's how we all. That's how I would say all of us that came up like building companies from that era. That's how we thought. It's just like, oh, you just we know somebody that knows some, and we and it worked because the relationships in the industry, right, uh, that allowed it to work. And, right. and a lot of people, it's, like, you don't understand, like. You you can you don't uh, you think you understood how you found success, but really it was your relationships and how well you knew an industry that gave you success. Yeah. You know, and it's so funny. It's like if someone taught this at Harvard Business School, you know, Gourmet starts in two thousand and eight. I work at Oliver Peoples two thousand nine. Gourmet kind of like is fle fledgling kind of along. Two thousand ten comes along, and I go to fucking bread and butter, and I'm staying with Garrett Light, who's my at the time he worked for me. Now he's Garrett Light, big optician guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in his room in in Berlin, Germany. He goes, Have you downloaded Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I said, No, I don't even know what you're talking about. He said, It's like this photo thing and your friends can see it. Like yeah. it was like that. Like, yeah. So I said, Okay, cool. I downloaded it. I had a thousand followers before I left Berlin. Yeah, right? pure play, man. The yeah. pure, the yeah. El Puro yeah. followers, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you like a month later, you got five. Yeah, and then I start my brand. I have forty thousand followers. The days of non-algorithmic partying, like yeah. the the algorithm party, hadn't even started yet. And you're yeah. like, you know. Anyway, I'm I'm kind of skipping ahead, yeah. but. You know, I started Buscemi on the back of social media, man. No, it look. I made a fucking sample. It looked like God himself brought so, it down onto the table. So let you know? me, let me, be, let me walk through the journey of that social media. It really like, is Like what That's it did so for close. Me. It's very close. So I, the moment you posted, you started first with just like leather. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I don't, it was like then like barely like, you know, like mm -hmm. the lock from the side. Like, exactly. then it was like, when you finally hit me with the feather, yeah, I called you. Yeah. I said, what's up? I yeah, want, yeah. I want it. I, what are we doing? I want in on this. Right. Because right. it was like, at this point, I'm like, you just built up a story mm -hmm. and I knew 
that it was about to be too late. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I was like, okay, bro, he's he's like when when I saw the lock and what the feather sent me over the edge. I'm like, this this feather, let's go. Right. Got you down. Mm -hmm. Okay. I I I got you down. I said, what's up? I want, let's talk. I want in, right? And so it was early on. You had just gotten, uh, you were just getting the samples. You hadn't even yeah, like yeah. even got. I think any... our first meeting was like, I had a sample. Like, no, didn't even have a sample I didn't yet. Have the sample. Didn't even I have drawings, the sample yet. Yeah, you had drawing, all that. Right, and yeah. like, even it was just literally on the edge. And this beautiful, oh, yeah, beautiful, that. majestic gold Rolex Yacht Master 2 was put on the table. For twenty five percent of your company, okay, <laughs> right at the beginning. Was it that one or the squat sky? Was it the sky? No, door? no, it was, that one? It was this it was that one. exact, which is a beautiful, beautiful, it's a beautiful, beautiful watch. gold <laughs> royal blue dial. <laughs> Why, <laughs> bro, right, right, bro? Right. I was like, I'm like, listen to me, John. Think of the story. This thing's worth thirty five thousand dollars. We, I know that this is going to be like the next great American brand. Like you do it right now. Imagine the story. You put this on this wrist. You put it on your wrist. You put it on I'll your wrist. Forget. I said, you shake my hand. You shake my hand. And and I'm like, this is the story. This watch. And then when when you are wealthy, you will still carry this watch in this story. And we took it as far as for you to like text, like like yeah, there uh, was there was action. Yeah, there was, there was movement. There was there movement. was movement. There was, a there bit was of movement. movement. And so just not movement on the watch, right? No it, movement on the watch. Look, and and you know, and and again, we could go back to man, it was like it's social media hype at its purest right. of like like here's the wave like or create the wave like when nobody was really create nobody was using like a platform to create a wave it was for photos that's right right and like man in in so of course i was in a transition period right right so i had the ceo and coo at the time brian was running street league and i had so I kind of sworn off gunslinging Right. Right. And so I had to get approval between the CEO and, and uh, the COO is a group decision. Right. I was chairman. Right. Like mm -hmm. trying to be more professional business like. And I told the, they're like, you know, let's go through a process and look. I said, I don't even care. Don't even care. If you guys don't want to do it, then I'm invested on the side. No, like it'll just be my own money. It won't even be through. I was already manhandling and bullying them, being right. like all aggressive of right. like. You like, were going off your kind of script. About, right. Like right. I immediately because I'm like, you know, and and time started ticking. Right. And then yeah. we finally got together and and it was already like. It yeah, was, but it still was with them too. Like we were still talking, talking. We were talking on both sides of the equation. Yeah, bit, but right? but 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 trading for that for that uh, trading for that equity on that watch. It's really, I think we could have probably landed on fifteen percent for that watch, maybe ten, and had the story exactly. Um, but huh. it was like, no, let's do let's do a hundred grand, and then it then it fell apart. Then then the whole team came down. Then we're talking through it now. I'm like getting even more excited, and and it. I don't know how it began to fall apart, but then you then you brought it out, right? It was like yeah. it was in that time you had got the samples, now got the initial order in place, like it was drawn out. To then we, I remember, I don't know if you remember this, where we, it like started now bubbling, and now I was angry, like you see how this is bubbling, like, yeah, and then we met again. We don't at, have like, to that, mention the names of like that them. secret place, like uh, that one, uh, that one bar down on Fairfax where it doesn't have a name. You gotta like knock. Yeah. The, the no door. name place, yeah, yeah, like, and it was gone. The opportunity was Sean, gone. Sean Parker's place, yeah, and it was, it was gone. And hey, there'll be other, there'll be other opportunities. Well, we have it on right. the wall here, right? And then, and then, like, it, so it was like, of course, it went on to absolutely explode and 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 be this, you know, everything that, um, like I expected it to become from one or two posts, you know what I mean? And, and I think that that was the most uh, amazing aspect. And, and look, I never, I, it, it hurts my heart a little. My heart yeah. hurt a little for, for missing that. You know, they always say like, oh, there's another train leaving the station. But that, that train, that train, it still hurts, you know, because I, yeah. for how close we were and, and just like, 
knowing like having so much respect for your way of thinking and and ability and like knowing like oh this is it and and missing that and investing in a bunch of other like random stuff you know what i mean was like a part of the right. the the journey of learning you know right. as you always do especially when you're you know always like hunt but different you go ideas. so hard dude yeah you were going hard back then like yeah the office and the staff and the yeah the layers you know yeah, that was deep. Walk in, it was deep it was like you know, yeah. and I had the respect. To, I had to come show it to you. you yeah. Know what I mean? Okay. So then, then, then Buscemi hit. Then what are some before? Um, tell me about sort of all of the other ventures you've done, even from that from from that point on. Right. So, funny enough, when I was in your office, I was employed by another startup that I started called Greats. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ryan Babenzine and myself. Okay. At the end of the day. I'm broke. Basically, bro I'm taking it back a step. I'm broke. I have zero income coming in and broke. My wife works. I have gourmet kind of just sliding down this hill. I have the sample. I'm interviewing for jobs. Literally, I'm. I have. I don't. I, I'm not afraid to say it. I'm like interviewing for jobs at the hundreds. Yeah. And at, you know. I can't remember all the places like secretly interviewing, not like on yeah. LinkedIn interviewing, like calling my friends that own companies like, hey, why don't I run the marketing for you? How about how come I run your footwear department and writing business plans in my spare time with Ryan Babenzine in Santa Monica and raising money for greats had the idea for the great greats was this really amazing idea. Warby Parker came out and it was like Warby Parker just. Through a, I mean, direct to consumer in 2011 was like, what, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's pure play direct to consumer that's been around for 100 years, but Warby Parker disrupting that. We're like, me and Ryan, are like, let's do the shoe version of that. Yeah. Men's shoes, value proposition, website only, da 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 da. We write the business plan, we raise money very fast with OPEX for my salary. So I'm like, okay, I can breathe a bit. And I have this Buscemi sample, which was an art project until my brother-in-law and his kind of family came and said, this is an art project, John. You have 40,000 followers on Instagram. You have the probably the greatest designed luxury shoe of all time, yeah. in their opinion. <laughs> yeah. I, did, I knew it was great. And then it was like, let's do this. And I said, but you know, I'm doing great. So like, it's fine. And was Gourmet still? Gourmet, like, you I, were, no, you I were left. Okay, you no, left. No, I officially Man. quit. Man, Dancing with the Devil on three of those at once. The day, yeah. I, the day that check hit the bank account for greats, the, I could give a shout out to Adrian Wilson from, from the Arizona Cardinals. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was going to be your banker. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, from no, Bank no. of America no, no. down on Sepulveda. <laughs> I want to give a shout out to, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so anyway, we get this literally the day the check hits. I call, you know, who at Gourmet and I said, I'm out. I'm starting a new brand. Thank you so much for your service. And then at the same time, I'm secretly working on the Buscemi project. So great started again, just from the earned media and our connections and PR and, and, and then, you know, knowing Kevin Ma and, and the guys at High Snobiety and we kind of hacked together this direct to consumer brand. Sh paid like nothing to shoot the first video got the website up on shopify somehow made shoes in mexico got production made and uh we launched it and it was it was it was it was pretty successful right out the gate right yep. and again like i i think like when you when it when you launch something and it really gets momentum immediately yeah you know there's something there again you know social I mean? media helped yep. right then no algorithm, no blocking, no blocking yeah. out, no, no, you're in a low post on social media hey, and you're just getting like, you got to pay. Nobody pay now, was, pay. Yeah, that's what no, I'm saying. no one then, was down there. But I'm saying it was like an empty pay. net. There it was, was an empty net. Every no, night, every night's an empty hey, net goal. In that era, there wasn't even paid advertising Nothing. on any of the platforms. Zero. Like your own post got you promotion. You know what I mean? Big time. And man. anyone they that followed that you out, saw it. The, they figured yeah. that shit out quick yeah. now. But anyway, so that helped. Um, everything at that point and then i go to paris you know ryan's not happy about it and i and you know it's funny i just saw ryan today yeah um because we're now building another brand with ryan right uh post it's, it's amazing yeah it's amazing um 
I go to Paris and I open the 10 greatest boutiques on the planet with my my small collection, including that shoe. And I come home. Ryan wasn't even happy I went to Paris. I don't blame him. He's the CEO. I'm the creative director. I'm like moonlighting and six months into our brand new venture. Yeah. But yeah. I, it, I told him it's more of an art project. And I had this going before we finished a greats thing. It's like throwing two, you know, throwing two things against a wall. They both stuck, but then something went a little, yeah. something looked a little bit different than the yeah. other. And then, well, I mean, yeah. shoot, you also with Buscemi, your name. Right. And the way bigger stake. Right. Yeah, like, exactly. you know, just a everything about it matter. And look, I think it's the right, you know, to to entrepreneurs and people around an opportunity like like sometimes you got to take a couple of shots. Take two shots. And yeah. One like, of them's gonna, and yeah, it sucks yeah. that like you got put in a position of having a double heater. Uh, but like take the one that ultimately is going yeah. to serve sort of the vision of what you're, you, you even have for yourself. Plus the eponymous nature of my last name on the brand. hundred percent, hundred percent. But it was a bigger risk because it was like, let's charge 900. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, yeah. and then like when to capture that customer mm -hmm. is such an extreme long shot. But if you do, the value is, is, yeah. is tenfold. Right. And I think that's really um what you prove there you yeah. know what I mean? and that customer once you get that customer they have you know they fortunately have buying power and they're not just buying yeah you know some of these people are buying dozens of these things you know okay look so we got bijami great now what now let's start talking about like what what was the next sort of because now after after these you start uh almost like creative well, director yeah. entrepreneur yeah uh, there was two waves that happened after those two things so I call it like deal flow wave. And then there's like serial killer entrepreneur wave, like me being like, uh, I got 10 ideas. Like, you know, like just what it was like yeah. chill, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but the deal way, I, the greatest thing about, I think Buscemi was I started to, it's like putting a sign out on your house, you know, like a sign out on your office, like uh, saying like, I can help you with your brand too. You know what I yeah. mean? It's like people, you start to get these side calls like, hey, can you design shoes for me? Hey, can you, you know, some of the biggest brands in the world, I've set up their footwear deals in Italy through like my partnerships out there. And, you know, Josh Luber from StockX and Dan Gilbert, they called me early on, first money into StockX just because they wanted to round out like this one person on the cap table that understands luxury sneakers. Yeah. Like I yeah. got the call, you know? Yeah. So that's like, that's the deal flow wave which is yep. amazing but then the other side of it the uncle paulie's uncle paulie's is more of a passion project now it's turning into something different as everything else does it was more about like opening one deli so paulie and i can have a sandwich on this side of town and impress all of our friends from new york yeah yeah now it's like the fourth deli's opening in august we have a deal with Tal and and the Fertitas in 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 at the Palm and Red Rock and we're talking to Austin C three guys and there's a London thing happening and there's a it's like you know what I mean yeah. it's just like now yeah so the deli um I think also we treated the deli from a marketing perspective like a fashion brand yeah and we also make we have like a we have a line of yeah. Clothing. Look to me, I wasn't even like, is it like a real deli? Like I was like, yeah, confused. I yeah. thought it was just like, like the, the deli was a front for apparel is what I thought. Yeah, the hat, like our hat, which we sell dozens of a day now, you know, is seen on you know influential people. It was written up in there's like there's like a deep cut hat, like you know, there's like these hats, like you know, Blackberry Farms in Tennessee or whatever the hats like you see someone wearing from a yacht. Yeah, they wrote a story like in the Wall Street Journal about, and our hat was in there. Like, if you have an Uncle Polly's hat, like you're, yeah, nice. you're in the know or something, you know. The, anyway, the wave. It was a wave. So, Andy Agiloni, who is my CEO uh, and you know one of my best friends and you know partner in Buscemi, he actually resigned after we. Well, I'm I'm fast forwarding a lot, but yeah. we sold um we sold a piece of Buscemi to private equity like halfway through. And um, Andy resigned and he was kind of like, like fell back into the background and his son and his partner started, uh, um, they had sauce, they owned at sauce, 
on Facebook and on Instagram, just the word at sauce. And, you know, Andy was talking like, what are you guys going to do with the brand? And they didn't actually have an idea yet. Maybe it was going to be an apparel brand or maybe it was going to be a tomato sauce or whatever. They landed on, why don't we do a hot sauce? And I think a lot of it, I don't know a lot of it was, but Andy's influence was like, well, why don't you do a luxury hot sauce? You just did luxury sneakers. Like, why don't you do like a spin on, you know, like the elegance of food and, you know, black truffle and, you know, all this stuff. And then, it, you know, I'm leaving a lot of the story out, but they they started testing. I wasn't involved in any of this process. They started testing like in their own home kitchens, like sriracha peppers, agave syrup, black truffles. And like, they just were formulating it. And Andy's like, you got to come try this thing. I think we're going to do a hot sauce. And I came down, tried the sauce and uh, they decided it's going to be 99. We're going to do a $99 sauce. Woo, that was the original. <laughs> with a, with a, <laughs> a gold plated, beautiful gold plated cap, like De Leon kind of yeah. uh, tequila comes in a box. It kind of obviously went, it got not whittled down, but it we we went real down, in. Reeled we reeled in. it in. Yeah, we launched at fifteen dollars. I'm also um, along that journey. Um, I called the Oracle Aaron Levant, mm -hmm. as I call the Oracle. <laughs> I I called Aaron Levant, um, another uh, serial entrepreneur, yeah, another serial uh, entrepreneur who's had another, a trade show yeah. now has the network like right. visionary. Yeah, absolutely one of one of uh, one of my favorite partners, but. We were at a dinner and he said his family was starting a hot sauce. And I said, oh, my God, I'm starting a hot sauce with Andy. And they had met before or whatever. And he said, I'm not going to do that with my family. I want to invest in this. So anyway, so Aaron jumped on board. We raised some money from just us. We threw some money in the pot and we launched. Um, we did about, you know, 10 or 20,000 bottles the first year. Yeah. This year we'll probably do over a million bottles or yeah. I don't even know what the numbers are, but, but it's, it's really it, wild. Again, it's another wild. one, like a perfect name, perfect like like trough, like just perfectly done and then it works straight out the gate. Right, and the bottle right? was designed correctly. It had this, the yeah. spirit of luxury. You know, our price points was almost double everyone else in the aisle there, but the, you know. But you will pay for it. For that value prop. Yeah, it truffle. really has. You know what I mean? It really does. does you know, so, so look, so a serial entrepreneur like no other, you know, it, it is, it is, is in, in for me, I'm, I'm jealous all the way through. Why can't, you know, I'm out here building the machine. How come me and John can't, can't do something. Right. right. So, uh, and, and I'm always sharing you. We're, we're always talk, up, we're talking. We're always talking six months. Yeah, every six months is a check in. Yeah, like always like looking at it, you know what I mean? And so. We we finally get together. This is this is in July of 2018. Really? Is it that? To give that you context of how long that is. Wow, right? that is interesting. And so because uh, in you know, we launched you know the the Luso Cloud uh brand in November of 2020. Like just to give you like a two and a half year run of like really getting it in order. Right. And so, you know, it was also like, we had really evolved. We had built so many companies and done so many things that our process had really evolved at that point. And so now we're just talking, right. It, it's just talking. And, and then it's like talking about opportunity. We talked a little bit about Buscemi and, and ultimately I was like, man, we should do a, man, what about a slide company? Right. And we were like, all right. So then we we just kind of like talked a little bit about it and what it could be, and then we did the immersion, right? Because it's mm -hmm. like I don't, you know, what, what's what is that even possible, right? It's kind of right. really was, and and there was like an all birds wave cooking that was like kind of bumming everybody out, you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's like, how is all birds like a billion dollars with this like weird shoe, you know what I mean? Right. And like, like, and that was the when we got into that immersion, right? That was. We, you know, because at our, our process that at that point is like, okay, let's look at everything in that space. And it was the Gucci slide mm -hmm. up at, you know, two, three, four hundred. And then like the Adidas slide at like 45. Then there was sort of a range up to around 100 in that zone and then a range down to like around 200. And there was just like this, this dead zone in that 150, you know, and and in that, so I don't know if you, I don't know if you remember how when we were going, cause we went through that immersion in September 
and that was September 2018. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So that was a few. That was a you know yeah. it took a while to like for us to even get get back together after we we went through it, and and then it was like you know this idea of like how the the Gucci sli- slide almost or Gucci slipper almost acts as a shoe, right? Mm-hmm. And that. Um, the slide is more like sort of comfort brand or whatever. And and that was, I'll never forget where it was like, where we were going <laughs> through it. And then it was like, like you, that was the point where you're like, close the toe, make the dough, right? Where it was close like, you know what I mean? Like, forget the, <laughs> forget about like, there's nothing like on the like toes close side. That's the hybrid shoe, right? right. And, and uh, like close the toe. I mean, I remember laughing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> just, just like you know what it is close it was just immediately was the wave of like this is the opportunity close the toe and make the dough and make that thing like in the like 150 zone and really make it like where it's like a sneaker right um but still a comfort and make it comfort over everything right, right? And we got to really we got at that price now we just we threw the whole kitchen sink at the comfort. Right, right. You don't so have to like fake the comfort, like right, right. Like no. that was the other. And again, this is like the depth of your knowledge too. Where like you can then say, well, if we can end up in there, then we can really load it up and all. Yeah, this because stuff. you know how we, where we come from, it's like you're living and dying by you know the margin, the marketing, and this and that. And now yeah. now you got customer acquisition. It's like oh, there's no let everything comes out of the product. Right. Like me, I don't work like Buscemi. It was like. Make the product what it is, and that then the price comes. You know. Yeah, and 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 for us and our growth through the machine and everything we learned, we also had we wanted deep margin discipline because now we know how hey, you got to spend a lot of expenses out there. Yeah, like you gotta you gotta acquire these customers. You wanna you wanna have money built in for that. You wanna be able to like get to retail at some point, and still have a great margin. So we were we were cooking in in concept now but we knew we couldn't go and do it we needed somebody to operate it right right and and i think this is really when your like magic really began to to really evolve because you really went out and found chris noise and right. was like okay like if you need somebody that understands the operational side and the sales side i've got the yeah. perfect guy right and that really the moment like we were able to get um chris on board because you know we can't run the the company you're not going to run the company full time like it's an it's a unique situation where we're coming together building something but we still need to right. put somebody in to do it and then the moment uh he was on board now we're cooking just been and, so lucky through the career too to meet people like chris you know yeah and and look i i i'll say the entire build watching you operate in in understanding what's the piece that's needed and go out and finding it on so many different levels is is borderline magic. Thanks, man. Uh, what you've done in, in, across the entire process, but now we're cooking, right? And 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 what happens um, it, that drives the inspiration for what the the shoe became? Yeah. You know. So at Buscemi, we made a similar product, but it was four hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. I mean. And it was far less comfortable than what we make. But yeah. but the idea was, the, the idea always comes from travel. So you're traveling around and me, when I'm traveling, I feel like, well, either you're dressing up way more than you dress up normally, or you're dressing down more than you dress, you'd be dressing down more than you're you know, normal, right? Yeah. So when I'm traveling to Italy and I'm on a work trip, I'm wearing sweatsuits and whatever, you know what I mean? And... I love to just wear slippers to the office, you know? And sometimes I would wear, you know, Birkenstocks or whatever, and I'm just like slipper guy. But then the hotel, the hotel slipper from the Four Seasons or from the St. Regis or whatever, you know, the one that's just like either waffle or like towel, you know, yeah. terry material with a little thin rubber bottom. Yeah. Uh, Justin Bieber's in Soho with Haley. I don't know. It must have been in 2018. Yeah, yeah, it was right, it was right. Yeah, right end, around yeah. there. It was really, literally, right around when we came together with the idea. He's walking around Soho in that Saint Regis slipper with like a pair of cargos and a denim jacket. And it's just like, it was. That's a that's a catalytic moment. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like it was just like that's it, man. That's the full. First of all, where you got that shoe from? You got it from you know 
yeah. next to your Loves bed in a beautiful yeah. hotel yeah. room. And then it's like, I don't give a fuck so much that I'm just, I'm riding or dying in this thing in fucking West Hollywood, yeah. West Broadway in yeah. Soho. So anyway, that was kind Do of- Do you the, remember the how you presented it to me? Because <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you how it's seared into my brain. Okay, I am standing- like in my office, looking through my glass door down the hallway, and you got them on your feet, and you're not even, you're shimmying. Yeah, you're yeah, just yeah. shimmying in and looking at me, <laughs> and you're just like shimmying in with, and I'm like, oh, fuck, we got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I was like really in, like, you, we weren't even discussing. <laughs> we weren't even like having right, a right. conversation. You were riding the wave <laughs> into the office with it, and you're like, this is it. Yeah. And it was like, I knew it before you said it. I knew it before you got in. It was like cut together. It was just kind of a thing. <laughs> and here it, it is. is. Yeah, there. Here it is. You know what I mean? And yeah. and and I. That's a really good one. From, look, don't, for, this, for the record, like that this is, is the, the one that you slid in here on because I knew how I knew that it was the moment of like God. This really is it. And I know if you remember correctly, you were shout like, out to Eleven Howard, uh, Abby Rosen. <laughs> yeah. Look and look. I'm holding this beautiful slipper that is the inspiration for all the Luso cloud really in, in, in the wave and when john i knew to keep to it bronzed. i knew and and then remember you guys wanted me to send it to to the factories and i was like freaking no. out like i can't and i sent it um and and the, you guys still sent it back okay yeah. but i was like i need the original one like i was like such but I, so i have you them have both okay. you know yeah, what both? I mean? okay good because i knew that 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 was what it was and again i say that's the it's it's the it's now the backbone of the look, feel, the way the entire thing even feels, you know what I mean? And, and it's total originality because even at that time, we, we were like, let's win like all birds. Let's have one silhouette and it's like anywhere, anytime comfort, right? So it was, it was versatile. It was like EVA sole so you could still wear with a pair of jeans and like into a restaurant or wear it with shorts to the beach, right? right. It was like we were really like, hey, we're going to win um, with – uh, going that route, but we still hadn't even landed on a name yet. At that point, it was County Co. Yeah, County Co. You know Co. what I mean? Yeah. And then our first meeting with Brock, you know what I mean? We were up in here, and it's like, all right, we got to figure out a name, like County Co. We were kind of up against it because now we were deep into the silhouette and designing it, and, like, uh, you know, we have to, to There was choose. many naming meetings. I yeah. Think. It wasn't just one. Yeah. And it, it, no, we tried a bunch of yeah. names, but then it was like, okay, let's get together and, and land on something. Yeah. And a little more magic. Happened yeah. There. And, and it was like, like Laguna was, was in there. Yeah. It was like, you know, we were like, you know, we, we loved like the connotation of like the cloud and the cloud couch and what that sort of meant and, and, and sort of every last thing. And, and you just said, what do you think about Luso? Yeah, because you had Lusso. you had one of those at the time. That's too. it. That's it. And it was like the the GTC Luso sitting down there that that you walked by on the way in. You and it was like because really it needed to feel the comfort and the like you know it didn't need to be on the nose like a lot of the brands that we build down here. You know what I mean? Right. That are like big out and mind dry. Like it yeah. was more like how does it even feel? Right. That five that five letter word is always great. You know? Oh, and and man, it was like all of us were just like oh, and then it was like you're like Luso Cloud. Like yeah. I mean, you. Yeah. It just went from like do 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 do. Yeah. And 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 locked in uh in a moment and in perfectly and instantaneously in that single meeting, you know. Um and, and to me, you know, I, I guess like um how much do you love the process of being a part of creating and, and building and like and naming product? You know what I mean? Like I, I love even just being there. It's why I love it so much. I think this is the, the I, you know, I, I say this a month, you know in other interviews or whatever getting a sample back for the first time is better than like doing you know ten thousand pairs in sale yeah like yeah. even that those nuggets like of like like creativity payoff you yeah. know yeah it's like but it's almost you really can't, too, can't it's, beat it it's creativity birth yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Where it's like this. This was just an. We just right. talked. It is birth like, because it the, it lives on, right? Yeah. Not just a, it doesn't live and die by opening that box. Yeah. Right? It's and, like having a baby. 
and she and, was our baby. So. Yo, and 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 don't forget, you know, the great uh, Jay Beck. Uh, you know, who we both know from DC, who who went on to do creative rec, huff, a lot of different stuff in footwear, who is the shoe king. Right. Uh, one of our early investors also took a shot at bringing. Um, Shout out to that pro rata. Uh, you know, bring, <laughs> bringing, <laughs> bringing, bringing the brand to life. And I don't know if you remember it. But it was a sample that didn't oh, quite God. bring the joy. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. And, and for those listening, oh, if God, you could imagine Jay. like oh, a, a Swedish, <laughs> like, like wooden Swedish, like clog yeah. uh, is, is That's basically. That's like a yodeling shoe. <laughs> like That's a, a pure, yodeling pro model. Pure yodeling pro model. So this didn't give us the juice and the joy. It was like, okay, we, J Jay oh, can't make God. this. You know, oh, let me just look at it. It's Jay, what's, together. what happened, Jay? <laughs> you know I mean so, so another big shout out to uh the brew break the brothers brew break yeah and and, like and, and look it, understanding the mission hey it, the the brothers brew breaker are it, it's the it, it's collectively as a group then now let's take it and nuance it right yeah. because at the end of the day this is a crazy group I, yeah you keep thinking about this and again i i feel like you know you chris them like it's now and and now brock's michelle. involved right like yeah. like shout and eventually michelle, michelle right yeah. like it's it keeps stacking and this is what i'd consider like we're we have the machine and we're built to like manage and like hey let's we're going to handle the business side and get this thing and and but here's the things you got to think about then it's like chris noise became this big unlock now now it allowed you to stand up at top and be uh, pointing right and left and be driving right that right. that allowed it and then it's all the right people that nuanced it towards this amazing brand right you know it's another great thing that people are forgetting well, we have COVID and we launched this brand in COVID. Yeah. And coming out of COVID, we never wanted to be a direct to consumer brand. Like that was not our mission. We wanna yeah. we wanna be a kind of holistic retail, wholesale, direct to consumer, you know, brand. And now just the love that we're getting from retail from retailers. Yeah. Like yeah. we love what you're doing, like incoming calls, like back this is like feeling like six or seven years ago now. Yeah. It's like Hey, can we get the line sheet? It's like, whoa, man, yeah. this is cool. You know, yeah. it's cool. And it's nice to be able to have those relationships still. You know? Yeah. And, and and again, I think it's the it's when you really do it right, you know, and and we were patient, right? right. You, Cause you gotta think if if we had a first meeting in July of 18 and launched in in November of 2020, you know, like that is a significant amount of time. Uh and and again, and I think was, for for the right reasons. Uh, yeah. All the right reasons. Yeah. And and you know, I think one of the big things and cooking. and and yeah, it, marinating and cooking is, and, you know. And I would say we learned a lot when we went out to raise money initially, right? Because really we were like <laughs> it was like they can't even see the deck until <laughs> until yeah. until they write a check, they yeah. can't even see that the was, deck. That was my that, that was, was the my, wave, that was right? A good wave to have. And and that's a nice way to start. I, I actually suggest that for yeah and intermediate and, level intermediate level entrepreneurs <laughs> not beginners yeah like and, we're like uh we're double diamond now right right so you can start off like that you know what i mean and, and look and i think we learned a lot like where people were were kind of taken back by trying to win with the single silhouette right and and, and i think like we learned in and even how we were kind of presenting the opportunity and and i don't know if you remember like but midway through like like, I just, like, somebody showed me that, like, we were trying to find comfort brand data and that, like, what, Uggs is 1.6 billion? Oh, what, Birkenstocks is is 1 billion and, and or, or Birkenstocks is 700 million and, and um, uh, what's the, um, Crocs are, are yeah. a billion? Yeah. I'm like, okay, like, what? Like, then, then we're the better cooler more comfortable version that sits right next to that right? right and and i i was so convinced that was the great unlock but i was so afraid i was afraid to share it with you because i'm like i thought you'd be like man i don't want to be ne i don't even like put us next to it like as your yeah. partner and friend i'm yeah. never not fully sure right. on what you'll be on board <laughs> with you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. and like your eye and way of looking at it <laughs> and and so like i made the video of like look this is this is the vision like like of what it could be like right, like right. we could literally if this is represents 3 billion dollars in 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 sales 
we can make a comfort brand that sits next to this that's better, higher quality, more comfort and like better looking, but still sit in that category. Right. And I think that really is when it then unlocked because right. then we became the comfort brand and then then it was like the mules and the and the pele and then the chuckas and now it's and just, just from like, a trend standpoint even yeah. back in 18 it was like let's just call it what it is the coolest people in the world were wearing comfort brands like yeah. it's just that unlocks it too right it's yeah. like back in the days it's like you know dc days you like you talk about comfort brand it was like oh my god yeah really yeah no, no it's way so true. you're wearing crocs you're out of here now yeah. You know, Post had a Croc collab and, you know, Chris Gibbs, who owns Union, the coolest guy in L.A. who's wearing Crocs. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. it's a different thing. Yeah. So and, and I'm saying com like comfort's a new luxury, too. We can get into that. We could talk about that for an yeah, hour. Yeah. And look, and, and I would even say that, like, um, like we even, you know, timing, patient, shaping, cooking it, making it like right. And then we we landed in market at the perfect time where like like the comfort like wave was had now at a peak by the time we launched and then had that like we're saying that success right out the gate. Man. Right. And, and again, I, I just attribute that to just, you know, a, a lot of different factors. Um, but but mainly again, you know, all the people that you put in place, all the, the influential people that ended up on the cap table that 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 really helped create the wave as a whole. And then the beauty of how unique and amazing the product actually is. And then you just shoot the actual footwear and post it. And that's that says it all. Right. And now it's like a thick anybody that gets them shoots it down and and, and a photo of it and, and posts it and just continues you to build the it. wave. Like based off of going all the way back to that inspired, like hold luxury hotel look right. of shimmying all the way in, yeah. all the way down to like now we you know you know at some point in here we've been like waffle it all, waffle, waffle. a car, yeah, <laughs> waffle, waffle the house, you know. So you know, hey, look, and then from Leo rocking it to Oprah rocking it and to they, uh, uh, the the goat, um. I gotta look at my phone. Uh, what the speed? Transformer the homie. Oh, Shia, 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 Shia oh, LaBeouf, man. the goat. Man, he was the cooking. The goat's wearing him, cooking him on. Cook. Look. Leo's he, on, on set. Leo's on set. Yeah. And, I, and he can't take him off. Yeah. Um, yeah. Leo he, he can't take him off. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, and look. I still get off on the uh, the celebrity um, wearing my shoes. You know what I mean? I'm not yeah. afraid to say it. I yeah. love it. No, Style. you should, look, man. Look, when I get a pedicure and I see Lusos, in yeah. magazine yeah i'm happy well look man I, I it has been an absolute honor to build this company with you um it has been an like amazing life, journey like life. amazing journey like you know this is just the beginning we're catching the wave obviously like you know we we're leading this round we're like okay we're not even like let's just cook you know what i mean like let's right. really get this capital in here and let's just cook this thing um but it, it's been it really, really fun creating it. I'm glad we finally did it, and we did a real one that's going yeah. to be massive. And thank you, no, thank for you. finally, thank you, finally coming down, man, and making it happen, man. <laughs> Love you, man. Love you too, man. All right, that's it for our show today. Make sure you follow Build with Rob wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe at YouTube backslash Deer Deck Machine. And don't forget, you want to come along this journey with us? Become a machinist. Become one of our consumer collaborators. Uh, go to DeerDeckMachine.com. Click on Machinist and join us. Join us. We'd love to get your feedback and have you a part of our entire process. If you are an entrepreneur and you got a real deal idea and you want to partner with us, Find Are You A Do or Dyer on DeerDeckMachine.com. Upload your video and who knows, you might just end up on this show. But the only way you're going to end up on this show is if you got a vision. If you believe in that vision, then you have the wherewithal to bring that vision to life. You got to see it, believe it, and do it. Till next time, I'm Rob Deerdeck.